Welcome to Table Talk Reviews. Today I'm going to be showing you how to play Draconis Invasion. Draconis Invasion is a deck building game for one to six players that plays in 45 minutes. These are gold cards. Their cost is in the lower right hand corner and in the top left it tells you how much gold they are worth. These are action cards. Their cost is in the lower right hand corner and then along the left side of the card are symbols telling you what they do. A plus 2 means you can play two additional action cards. B plus 1 means if you choose to buy, you will gain an additional buy. So instead of having one buy, you will have two buys. Gold plus 10 means you have 10 additional gold to spend that turn. This is not gaining any of the gold cards. It is just additional gold to spend on your turn. Cards plus 1 means you draw an additional card from your deck. And again, A plus 1 means you get to play another action. Some action cards will also have additional text along the bottom, which give them an extra ability. For example, Betrayal allows you to play this card on another player's turn when they attack an invader, and it gives them negative 10 damage, making it harder to defeat that invader. These are the defender cards. Like any cards you can purchase, their cost is listed in the lower right hand corner, and then under their name is the amount of damage they can do, followed by the cost for them to do battle. This is the amount of gold you must play to do this amount of damage. Some defenders also have additional abilities listed on the bottom of the card. For example, Warlord allows you to gain one Imperial Guard to your hand to play immediately. Invader cards have their name followed by their health, which is the amount of damage you must deal to defeat that invader, as well as how many glory points they are worth. They may also have another indicator near the bottom right corner, such as Undead or Dragon. Undead will influence a card such as Necromancer, which becomes stronger when there are more Undead invaders revealed. As well, they will have a revealed action along the bottom. This is the action that takes place when an invader is defeated. Not the action on the defeated invader, but rather when you defeat an invader, a new card is revealed and that action takes effect. For example, the Hellhound's revealed effect is attacking player gains one terror card to the top of their deck. The campaign cards are essentially orders from your king telling you which invaders to defeat. For example, this card tells you to defeat two skeletal soldiers, and for doing so you will gain four additional glory points. If you defeat one hellhound, you will gain two additional glory points. The information along the bottom is just a useful indicator for the strength and the initial glory points for those invaders in case those invaders are not revealed on the table. Event cards are pretty self-explanatory. There's text along the bottom describing a negative effect that happens at the start of the next turn after they have been drawn. Let's take a look at the card setup. On the top row you have your gold cards in ascending order, followed by the terror cards and the terror die set to the starting roll. Beside that, you have your event cards, three per player, and below that is your final event retreat card. In the next row, you have the default action casualty of war, followed by six actions depending on which battle stage you're attempting. Likewise for defenders, you will have the default defender imperial guard and a set of six defenders depending on which battle stage you're attempting. Below that are the decks for the invader cards. You'll reveal three blue invaders and three gold invaders. The blue invaders are weaker, the gold invaders are stronger but worth more glory points. Beside the invaders you have your campaign cards. These are cards that will tell you which invaders you want to defeat and give you more glory points for doing so and they will be available for taking on your turn. To begin the game all players roll the terror die and whoever rolls the highest goes first and then rolls the die again to set the starting threat level. As indicated on this card it will tell you which terror or how many gold cards each player will gain to their discard. 
For example, if you roll a 4, all players gain 1 tarot card and 2 treasure cards to their discard pile. All players begin the game with a deck of 5 Imperial Guards and 7 Wealth Cards. Players shuffle their decks and draw a hand of 6 cards. Players begin their turns by playing an action card from their hand. However, this won't be possible in your first two turns as you won't have any action cards yet. Then they can choose one of the following either buy one card, campaign and take two campaign cards, defeat one invader, or eliminate a non-terror card from their hand. Following that, they can forward one unused gold card from their hand to the top of their deck. Then to end their turn, they discard all cards and draw a new hand of six cards, and it's the next player's turn. If players choose to buy, they can buy either a gold, action, or defender card. For example, in this hand I have 4 wealth cards for a total of 40 gold, so I could afford a treasure card for 30, or cursed fury action for 40, a dread knight card for 40, or the default action and defenders, and players can always afford the wealth card, it costs zero, so on any turn players can choose to take the wealth card. For example, I might use three wealth cards and purchase a treasure and then I can forward this wealth card to the top of my deck and have it for my next hand. If players aren't satisfied with the two campaign cards they were dealt at the beginning of the game, they can choose to campaign. This means they draw two new campaign cards, either from the three face-up campaigns or from the campaign deck itself. When drawing from the face-up campaign cards, they are immediately refilled before drawing your next campaign. If players choose the defeat action, they will play defender cards from their hand as well as gold cards to cover the cost for those defenders to do battle and attempt to do enough damage to defeat one of the invaders that are visible. For example, in this hand I have a Valkyrie. Her cost is 50, so I have a fortune and a treasure card totaling 50. I can pay for her to do battle and she does 30 damage. I also have an Imperial Guard whose cost is 0 but only does 5 damage, so I can do a total of 35 damage. So I can defeat any of these blue invaders, as well as this gold invader here whose health is 35, so I will defeat that. So I take that card, and I keep that, and it is worth glory points at the end of the game. A new invader is revealed, and the revealed effect takes place. This revealed effect states that all players gain one terror card. So a terror card would be dealt to each player. Later in the game, players may have a lot of high value gold cards and a lot of stronger defenders, so they might choose to eliminate a card. This allows them to trash one card from their hand. It can't be a terror card, unfortunately, so they might choose to trash a wealth card which just means they place it back on the pile. Anytime a player has to discard terror cards, they will increment the terror die by the amount of terror cards they're discarding. For example, two terror cards will increment it from four to six. Anytime the terror die hits six or passes six, an event card is drawn and passed to the next player. At the start of that player's turn, they will reveal the event and read the effect out loud. For example, this event says reshuffle and reveal new invader cards, ignore effects. Players with the most kills must gain one terror card to the top of their deck. The game ends immediately if the terror die is incremented to six, drawing the last event card and revealing the retreat card. Or if a player defeats six invader cards, or nine invaders in a two-player game. 
At the end of the game, players count up the glory points from their defeated invaders and reveal any completed campaign cards scoring the additional glory points, such as four additional points for these two skeletal soldiers and two additional points for this hellhound. Whoever has the most glory points is deemed the king's greatest hero and wins the game. And that's everything you need to know. I hope you enjoy playing Draconis Invasion. And if you're still considering the game, check out a review on tabletopreviews.com. And remember to like this video, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And I'll see you next time.